This is in German, so I'm going to have to translate. Here we have the <laughs> Gestapo policy Nansen hunting down unsuspecting innocent human beings for not getting permission from the government to go outside. There's nowhere to hide now in Austria. If you fail to obey the whims of the government and present your papers, which you now always have to have on you, these thugs with firearms will hurt you in unspeakable ways. Here's one of the thugs now describing how she loves the taste of the boot of the totalitarian corporate overlord she serves. I first it tastes bad, but then you get used to the rubber, and then, you know, the boots just go down very well down the throat, especially if you chew on it and, and you use a lot of spit. Now, my, my German's a little bit rough, so that, that might not be the most accurate translation, but to me, it makes a lot of sense. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings, to wearechange.org. We got a lot of absolutely crazy news to get into. As the price for having Thanksgiving is going up astronomically, as many other people are expecting a bigger energy crisis, not just here in the United States, but also, of course, Europe. We're going to be getting into that, plus a lot more, as well as, of course, the latest developments happening right now in Kenosha with the trial of Kyle. Now, just getting right into it, today we're also finding out that the star witness of the state prosecutor's case against Kyle is also, quote, a career criminal, according to the Daily Mail, that just revealed his record of arrests when it comes to domestic abuse prowling, trespass, burglary, and other charges, which some of them were actually dropped mysteriously just six days before the trial began against Kyle. Now, this extensive criminal history was not told to the jury, as, of course, Gage Grosscourts has been treated sort of like a celebrity by the corporate media, as, of course, his first media appearance was on Good Morning America, where, of course, he got treated like some sort of celebrity, not even being questioned or asked any legitimate questions about that particular night in question. Now, I think it would have been important for the jury to know that the state prosecutor's star witness in this entire case lied to the authorities many times, lied on the stand, was previously charged with carrying firearms while intoxicated, domestic abuse, prowling, trespassing, two DUIs, felony burglary, and other charges, especially with the news of these charges being mysteriously dropped, all of which raises some very serious questions and concerns for people paying attention to this case. Also in this trial yesterday, we saw the state prosecutor pick up a firearm and wave it in the courtroom, pointing it at what looks like many individuals while, of course, his finger was on the trigger, as, of course, he was also aggressively chicking, winging the firearm that was used surrounding these events. Now, not only was this reckless, it was also dangerous, a dramatic stunt by the state prosecutors, which should be heavily criticized, especially on the heels of the latest events that just unfolded with, of course, Alec Baldwin on the set of his movie Rust. Now, some would say this criticism of the state prosecutor would be an exaggeration, but we also have to understand that other people in the United States were heavily prosecuted for doing the same thing, like Mark and Patricia McClowski, who, of course, had their firearms confiscated and faced a series of charges after brandishing and showing their firearms during an incident with protesters. Now, the McClowskis, very interestingly, also showed up outside of the court proceeding in Kenosha, trying to show their support for Kyle as they told the media that Kyle was, quote, acting in self-defense and has been, quote, politically prosecuted. Now, as the final arguments ended yesterday, the jury right now is in deliberation, as, of course, the National Guard and local police departments all throughout the United States are preparing for possible riots and protests that will lead to the decision of this very highly partisan court case that, of course, is dividing the nation. This, as even the president of the United States used this situation in order to push ridiculous talking points and woke doctrine suggesting that Kyle was, quote, a white supremacist last year, which, of course, there is no evidence of that at all. Why did Joe Biden do this? Well, on the eve of the jury deciding this case, Jen Psaki was asked this directly, his spokesperson. And, of course, not surprisingly, Jen Psaki refused to answer that question of the president of the United States knowingly 
lying to the American people and spreading fake news. Now, will Biden be fact-checked just like the previous president of the United States that had almost every action of his criticized highly? Well, no. His claims go, of course, unchecked, unquestioned, and even promoted by big tech social media that, of course, is and has punished people for questioning the official narrative of what happened to Kyle and, of course, a lot of the information surrounding it. One of the few ways that people were still able to voice their concerns was, of course, with the YouTube dislike button, which was heavily used against the Biden administration videos, along with any kind of corporate manufacturing of consent with and love affairs that included Dr. Fauci. If you look at who was most affected by the dislike button on this platform, it was, of course, a lot of people in the establishment that were ridiculously ratioed after spouting some absolute nonsense that they tried to sell to the American public. YouTube now got rid of a very important voice of the people, which even one of the co-founders of YouTube just came out and criticized this policy by commenting on the first ever video on YouTube that he uploaded by adding in the description of that video, quote, Whenever a YouTuber agrees that removing dislikes is a stupid idea, it probably is. Try again, YouTube. Face palm emoji. Not surprisingly, YouTube's video about removing the dislike button also has a lot of dislike. And of course, as this place and many other places are being squeegee cleaned of any counter-narrative, critical thinking, independent thought... This is why we launched LukeUncensored.com, where we get to do and say whatever we want. We have exclusive videos almost every single day on this platform, specifically about all the topics that we cannot get into on this platform, with a major focus on how to help you as an individual. Also, just recently, every member of LukeUncensored.com also got Change Media University for free recently. 21 tutorial videos about how to be an independent journalist, how to get your voice heard on social media. And now today, we are announcing that our Apocalypse Survival Training videos are also going to be exclusively available only for Luke Uncensored members. I was going to make this an independent product, but this is better for me to build my infrastructure as now you have over 20 videos about land navigation, building a fire, marksmanship, creating your own shelter, water filtration, so much more all available to you with easy to watch tutorial videos, which are only exclusively available to you. You could see the ratings that we got from these official survival apocalypse training drills and they are through the roof. I'm very happy to be able to provide you this, as of course, some of the skills learned here through these videos might actually help you in an extraordinary time of need, as of course, recently, I think we're living in ever extraordinary times. Going back to basics, living off the wild, hunting, animal trapping, harvesting rabbits, all of that is going to be exclusively available to you just by simply signing up to LukeUncensored.com. Now, I would argue these extraordinary times are made that much worse by, of course, the failing corporate media that says their job would be a lot better if people would just, quote, stop critically thinking this is an official written piece by the New York Times that had an article entitled, quote, don't go down the rabbit hole with the byline that read, quote, critical thinking as we're taught to do it isn't helping in the fight against misinformation. Yeah, you know, since regurgitating our corporate fed PR closely written nonsense and talking points and believing our overlords is the globalist in charge is definitely a lot easier as, of course, the mainstream media just keeps getting more deranged with their divide and conquer agenda as perfectly represented by this piece by NPR, which is going on unhinged rants about Asian Americans being the first woman of color to be elected, which some Somehow is a bad thing because there was three other black candidates that didn't even come close in this local election in in Boston. Who who cares? Why are we prioritizing trivial genetic differences over merit, over who people really are? Well, this is just more nonsense spewed that is absolutely nonsensical and, in my opinion, meant to confuse the general public as the elites, in my opinion, are just creating new divisions in order to make people fight each other. This nonsensical genetic fetidization is definitely reaching its peak, in my opinion, especially after an associate professor at Old Dominion University just came out and says that he wants to, quote, 
destigmatize adults doing unspeakable things to children. Yes, this is the, the woke doctrine encapsulated in this insanity, promoting more of a degenerate, godless society that keeps committing and trying to excuse horrible atrocities for its cult ideology. Again, that's just my own personal perspective. This is definitely absolutely crazy. Some people even questioning a lot of this nonsense. As in New Hampshire, a high school student was suspended for talking about biology of males and females, and of course, its scientific differences. He shared this in private text messages to another student, and he was essentially punished by that school's administration, which of course violates his free speech rights in his country. There's a lawsuit pending right now, but this punishment is not out of the norm, as of course it has been happening all throughout this country. And while the elites make up more trivial nonsense to divide and conquer this country, at the same time, we have to acknowledge that the people of this country are being robbed blind of their wealth, of their savings, of their prosperity, of their economic opportunities, as we're finding out that there is, of course, not not just inflation, but something called meatflation that has risen the price of meats almost double the price of what it was last year. Today, we also found out that Tyson Foods will be hiking the price again of meat with chicken going up 19% and beef going up 33%. All of this after disastrous energy policies along with mandates by the federal government and the Biden administration that is stopping the free flow of commerce. Now, this, along with a horrible energy policy, is making some people in California pay $4.84 a gallon for gas. That price is going to rise as, of course, the Biden administration is looking at shutting down more domestic energy production as, of course, he relies on Saudi Arabia. And in the name of fighting for the environment is literally having Saudi Arabia produce oil and ship it all the way to the United States while stopping U.S. energy consumption and production, which of course could be made here, produced here, and doesn't need to be shipped from the Middle East, which of course overall would be better for the environment. But a lot of this nonsense is in the name of helping the environment when in reality it doesn't. It does facilitate the largest transfer of wealth in recorded human history, making the poor poorer and the rich richer more than ever before in almost all of recorded human history. Expect this to get worse. Expect prices to go up. All of this because of an insane government that is literally implementing Orwellian doublespeak into the political discourse that is meant to confuse people. Energy prices are not only going to be going up, it also is becoming limited in supply throughout the United States. But of course, the situation here isn't as drastic as it is in Europe where, of course, many European countries rely on Russia for its energy. And, of course, tensions between Russia and the European Union have been at an all-time high, as, of course, many European Union countries are blaming Belarus and Russia with, quote, sending mass migrants on the border of Poland, as, of course, Polish cops have set up barricades, barbed wire, and have unleashed water cannons and tear gas, along with flash grenades against thousands of economic economic migrants who are trying to enter the country illegally without, of course, the proper avenues being explored. They just showed up at the border from Belarus. A lot of these economic migrants officially say that they just want to go through Poland to go to Germany to get benefits and to work and support for their families and loved ones. But obviously, migrants have been weaponized by some countries, as of course, there's a standoff happening right now with many of these economic migrants throwing rocks, trying to break down the barricades and trying to enter Poland illegally without going through the proper channels or proper paperwork of doing so. It's also important to note that Poland does allow a large amount of migrants into its country, predominantly from Ukraine, predominantly after a vetting process. And it's one of the countries in the European Union that does it its own way. Unlike, of course, Germany that had tremendous social and economic devastating effects on its population because of their migrant policies, which, of course, a lot of people argue overall had a tremendous 
tremendous negative effect on its population, especially when it comes to the rise of crime and assault on women. But that's another story. This says, of course, Germany just announced that they're suspending the approval of a Russian gas pipeline. All of this as Russia allegedly is building up a lot of troops on the Ukrainian border. And as tensions get worse, price of energy has risen, pipelines being denied. This is only creating a situation which doesn't look good for Europe, especially this winter, as many people have already predicted that there's going to be severe economic consequences because of the lack of energy, gas, and oil. How will that situation unfold? Well, to me, not in a good way. It looks like an utter disaster. If you are in Europe, I would definitely prepare accordingly. That's my own two cents. I got a lot more to say. I'm going to be shooting yet another video right after this one, continuing this video, talking about more important context surrounding the narrative changing again about the official policy by a lot of the quote, experts. We're going to be getting into that plus a lot more on LukeUncensored.com. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your feedback, for your constructive criticism, for your comments. You like this video, click like. You disliked it, click the dislike button while it's still here. Is it still here? Yes, it's still here for now. Thank goodness. I love your feedback. I appreciate it. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. This is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for a lot more here on WeAreChange.org.